Previously on Backpacker Diaries. After planting my cache there next to the scorpion, I managed to stage a car back in Escalante and catch a shuttle to Lower Muley Twist Canyon Trailhead. What was a dry Halls Creek wash now has a shallow flow. What was sandy terrain yesterday quickly turns into very sticky mud. It's time for me to head up and over Red Slide and down towards Middle Moody Canyon. Today is April 21st, 2018. After waiting out the rain yesterday before a nice hot sunbeam dried out my gear, I left camp around 4.30 and walked uphill for a couple hours along an old mining road towards Circle Cliffs Pass and found this amazing campsite here with views in pretty much all directions for my last night here in Capitol Reef. So it was a short day, but a restful day. For today, I'll be going up and over Circle Cliffs Pass and into Glen Canyon National Recreation Area and make my descent down into Middle Moody Canyon. It'll probably be the most intense route finding portion of the journey. I'll be making my way down some steep talus to get to the canyon floor. From the top of the water pocket fold here, Got to enjoy some sweeping views of the Henrys and a nice view north along the water pocket fold. And there's the Circle Cliffs Pass where I'll be going today. The scramble up to Circle Cliffs Pass here reminds me a lot of the scramble up to Mount Pinnell. About one year ago today, definitely had less snow on it one year ago, and also similar to my attempt to summit Mount Hillers a couple days before that. I totally just saw what was probably a desert bighorn sheep based on how it was moving prancing along the saddle here. And this is the high point of section six of the Hay Duke Trail. Panning across Capitol Reef with the Henry Mountains in the background. Right on the border of the National Park. And now looking into Glen Canyon National Recreation Area where I'm headed. Fortunately, I have the Nick Barth GPS track to fall back on. So special thanks to Nick Barth for making that freely available on the internet. So I've got that laid over the top of my free maps.me app that doesn't even have topo, but I'm confident that I'll be able to combine that with the Trails Illustrated map to find my way. Entering into the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, there's a lot of these purple hills, including a landmark called the Purple Hills, right in front of the uh, mesa I'll be hiking around. They're pretty to look at, but not fun to hike on. Doesn't matter how grippy your footwear is, I find it the steepest, sandiest, 
slipperiest, crumbliest terrain I've ever been on. So slipped a few times trying to get down that type of stuff, especially at the top of the pass over there. So I definitely didn't choose the easiest path down. Would have been easier to make my way to the lower part of the saddle where there's more vegetation there and a different type of terrain. But lesson learned as I follow this footpath and match that up with the, uh, the GPS track I'm following. Here on Earth Day in Middle Moody Canyon, really enjoying these birds swooping over the tops of the canyon walls here in the fading light. Quite a peaceful spot here where I'm camped. Pretty close to yet another purple hill. Today's April 22nd, 2018. After making it up and over Circle Cliffs Pass yesterday, made it down to within a couple miles of the food cache that I left at Moody Confluence here in Middle Moody Canyon. So after I finish up my hot drink here I'll be headed down to pick up my cash and see how it all fits together. I may be carrying a five gallon bucket inside of my pack today. We'll see how it goes. Having made it back to Moody Confluence I was pleased to find the cash that I had buried. Let's see if my guard scorpion is still around. Nope, he took off. Well, nevertheless, thanks Pinchy for guarding my cache. Now with a fully loaded pack, I'm only about two and a half miles from the Escalante River. So I'm looking forward to that. It'd be nice to freshen up in the river a little bit after four days or so on the trail. And if it looks like I have a five gallon bucket in my pack it's because I sure do why would I want to carry a five gallon bucket well for one thing I'd rather not have to come back and retrieve it later on because it basically takes a, a full day to drive back down the fur trail road to this remote trailhead and then hike four hours round trip to pick it up and then number two, it also functions as a dry sack in the river. If I should 
tip over, what's ever inside the bucket should stay pretty dry. And then a third benefit is that I get to have some stylish and comfortable furniture at whatever campsite I choose, whether it be using the bucket for a table or a seat. And then I'm sure it'll be a conversation piece should I encounter any other people between here and Coyote Gulch. The next reliable spring is a few miles downstream from the confluence with Moody off of Escalante River, so we'll see how I go. Taking a dip in the river was very refreshing indeed. I accidentally tested out how waterproof my headphones are. Turns out they're not waterproof. So that'll serve to give me more time for nature sounds and help my battery last longer for my other devices. About to pack up after drying out some laundry here and head into the river and see how far I get. I actually considered bringing a two pound pack raft for this section. Seeing how shallow the water is, I'm glad I didn't do that. The wettable shoe hikes do take a little getting used to. I did do a loop through the Escalante a couple weeks ago that sort of benchmarked my ability to do that and judging by how well my feet did, I was confident I could go into this trip without too much trouble with the wettable shoe section. Today is April 23rd, 2018. Yesterday I went about four miles down Middle Moody Canyon and roughly seven and a half miles in and out of the river on my way to Scorpion Gulch. After five nights, this is the first time I've been within two miles of the water source, which was nice. The cotton from the cottonwood trees is definitely flying. As far as the river travel goes, it's definitely taxing in a way that is beyond regular hiking. I haven't lost my footing yet, but having to choose my line down class one and perhaps even class two rapids at times can lead to a different type of fatigue in the icy cold water. I did bring these neoprene socks that were left over from a river trip from years ago. So I think that's been helpful, and perhaps the cold water has done its job to prevent inflammation. Generally speaking, unless I'm going crotch deep in the water, it's generally still easier to walk through the river than battle up the bank and through the thicket and then back down the bank to walk around the river and try to stay dry. It's definitely been a treat to witness the wildlife, whether it be snakes and frogs, or ducks and predator birds here in the desert canyon country in Escalante. Still got a good 23 miles of river walking left before I get into Coyote Gulch. I'm about to pack up and put my wet river shoes back on and see how I go.
as I make my way down the banks of the Escalante River here. Just came across a beautiful lizard with a black collar and yellow feet. Got kind of a striped collar actually. Beautiful little guy with sort of dark gray gills as well. Bit of a show off I think. strike a pose for me here. I saw a couple of bats here in this side canyon off of the Escalante River where that must be a decent spring. That's what brings me to this canyon. On the next Backpacker Diaries. I actually did some damage to one of my hiking poles where the handle essentially snapped off. After walking like 28 miles in and out of the river, this is still the most sketchy hazard that I've seen so far. Yeah. Some of the roughest road I've seen anywhere here on all the rock road. So washboarded. 